Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, as you seen in the thumbnail, in this video we are gonna see. What if Naruto and Starfire were couple, this is episode 11, and if you want more then please leave a like, share and subscribe. Let's get in the video. In Atlantis. The Kwaman was utterly outraged, and it was not merely anger at Orm, but himself as well. All this time the blonde who was with Superman had been right all along. His pride and his unwillingness to consider the possibility that there was indeed a traitor in his kingdom led to this. He was filled also with an absolute loathing for the soldiers who willingly went along with this and saw the arrogant smirk on Brack's face. That slimy bastard had been part of it this the whole time, and now he realized just why Brack was so willing to defy him in the throne room before. He and Orm had planned this all from the start and he only helped to make the process a lot faster than before. He could not help but feel the pain of that truth become more potent when he had to deal with Orm gloating about his plan, as well as taunting him about his view on his leadership. I had to stand by and watch you lead Atlantis and our people to stagnation and ruin, all because of your unwillingness to do what should be our destiny. To take the surface world and show those surface dwellers that we are their betters. Instead our home gets polluted, and Wagad is rightfully that of Atlantis get taken and perverted by this primates above us. No more shall I let this happen. Your insane Orm. This is treason of the highest level and you know it. Treason. This is insurrection dear brother, a just insurrection to remove one who is lazy and truly worthless as leader of this nation. Take him away. The Kwaman roared in anger and soon broke free, smashing blows into the now revealed traitor soldiers to his kingdom, and he intended to smash his fist right into the face of his traitor sibling. However Orm blasted him with the trident's power, howling Arthur's attempt to fight, and the former king was now secured by the traitors. Orm looked at his sibling with now undisguised disgust and arrogance. Take him away. Brack smiled at that and replied. At once my lord. As Aquaman was taken away, Orm began to think on his plans to finally take control of not merely Atlantis, but the surface world as well. That was not the only direction his thoughts were going though, he had to deal with Mara and his nephew. But just as he was about to go into that direction, the object of the new train of thought in his mind came to him. Orm. I have been hearing rumors that Aquaman is alive here in Atlantis. Is that possible? Orm tried to and managed to maintain a calm and serious visage though mentally speaking, he was utterly livid with the idea that the reports of his bother had reached Mara's ears, but at least she had not been here to see them dragging away Arthur when he had shot his brother with a trident. I am afraid I cannot confirm or deny those rumors Mara, for all we know it could be some imposter or merely the stress of Arthur's loss that is affecting our people. Mara was not too pleased by this, but spoke. How can you say such things Orm? We have not yet confirmed anything. I know, but we have to assume the worst until we find out more Mara. I will do all that I can to protect you and your son. Mara may have been a very beautiful woman and a member of nobility, but she was not the least bit foolish. The way Orm spoke might have been an attempt to placate her. But the very fact that he was doing so in a tone that was odd made Mara a lot more worried as well as suspicious. And being the woman of courage that Arthur had known her to be, she spoke. What do you mean by that Orm? That was more than enough to make Orm realize that his attempt was not working, so he tried to be a bit more forceful. I mean what I said Mara, cooperate and nothing will happen to you and your son. That was more than enough to finally convince Mara that something horrible was happening here, and she quickly left the room to look for her son. The second she entered the private room of her family she saw to the cradle holding her child. Only to find that her son was no longer in there in his crib, and as far as she knew he was wrapped snugly in his blanket. The sight of it all filled her with horror and shock as she tried to find out what was going on. She however knew full well now who was the one responsible for this event of horror, and as she turned to look, she saw Orm looking at her. She felt shock, anger, and great fear, the last emotion due to what could be lurking in Orm's mind concerning her son. Why are you doing this Orm? I am merely doing that needs to be done on account of your husband's foolish tolerance of the surface dwellers. I declaring war against them. It is already underway Mara, do not interfere. Orm then left and made sure to silently signal some of his loyal followers to keep an eye on the queen, once he disposed of both Arthur and his son, then he will rule what was his by right. And with enough time, even Mara herself would soon be his. The idea made the betrayer of Aquaman smile even more as this would be his grandest moment. The surface dwellers had provided him with the means to enact his plan, and it was his own soon-to-be-removed brother who allowed him to get it. Oh the irony. Orm whispered to himself to avoid alerting anyone, a sound move on his part, when one of the members of the Atlantean navy came with a report. Lord Orm, we have news. Report. Our scanners have picked up the same craft used by the surface dwellers who came to save the submarine's crew. Orm gave a dark look at that and decided that dealing with them first was of high priority before moving the rest of his plan. Besides, they had to be contained lest they reveal the truth of his part in the attempt on his brother's life. 
and they could be used as scapegoats once secured and depowered with some devices of his. Deal with them in the manner those barbarians deserve. If you secure them alive, bring them to me so I can question them before I go to deal with the rest of their kind. Yes my lord. And the javelin. The heroes of the League were not too happy with what they were doing, since there was no telling what would happen once they got to Atlantis. The head start Aquaman had on them was a lot though at least with the javelin they had made good time. Still that hardly meant that they were in a relaxed mood, and like before they had more than enough good reason to be worried, though they also tried to be optimistic of their chances. Naruto on the other hand was not the least bit pleased by all of this. His long life and experiences back home made him more than aware that things would get really problematic once they got there. Hori spoke to Naruto who had a grim look on his face, as he was devoid of the mask for now. Are you alright friend Hokage? Naruto's grim look did not leave him, and he sighed as he replied. No I am not to be honest Kori-chan this is a very dangerous situation we all walked into. I have no doubt that the very second we get to Atlantis we are going to be in for a fight. Superman then replied. We should at the very least try to avoid that, we're not here to start a war Hokage. We might not be but whoever is the one who hired Deadshot certainly is. Remember that this guy is influential with that kind of wealth, allies, and has connections no doubt. The very second that Aquaman got there, they no doubt are holding him captive, and the very second we show up, they may very well give the Atlantean Navy orders to shoot us on sight. That got their attention well enough as they agreed that Naruto had a point and John replied. Then we're going to have to be ready for the worst. Diana then replied. True, but we still need to know just who the true enemy here is, we know that the enemy is no doubt of noble lineage in Atlantis, and no doubt has vast fortunes to fund this coup. But I cannot fathom on who it may be, since my people have little contact with them, so we have no idea if there are people with ill intent towards Aquaman and willing to go to full-scale war. Superman, you dealt with Aquaman before than any of us, is there anything you can share that might help you shed some light on this? Superman thought about it and replied with s reluctant shake of his head. Afraid not, my meeting with Aquaman years ago had me and Lois facing him and his fleet to convince him that war is not the solution. I never went to Atlantis at all so I have no clue on the political landscape at all. Besides I don't think they would have liked the idea of someone from the surface there. John replied. Well that complicates things, but from a military standpoint, I can bet the persons got either support from the military, or if persons, then one of them no doubt would naturally be high up in the military ladder. You can't have a coup if you don't have military backing after all. Hori then replied. Then we must be ready friends for we have company. Hori's statement proved accurate as they soon spotted a number of ships, Atlantean ships coming in. Superman gave a sigh and knew that it was decision time. John, try to contact them and tell them that we're not here for conflict we. Naruto however broke free from his stance and spoke, grim focus on his face. We're too late. Sure enough the Atlantean ships opened fired on the javelin and they all knew there and they it was no longer time to talk but to fight. The Justice League quickly trooped out of the javelin and they knew that the fight could not be avoided. Naruto was once more using the chakra shroud to allow him to not only move in the water but also to breathe and took out his sword as he and the others were now in the water. Superman was obviously not the least bit happy, but he knew that there was no other option when the Atlantean ships began to fire their weapons at them. Naruto managed to block several attacks in close combat, with several attacking Atlanteans on their usual rides. Naruto managed to channel his wind chakra to allow his sword better flow in the water, as well as increased cutting power to cut their weapons into the weapons of the Atlanteans. The blonde then knocked the attackers of their bikes and then joined the others as more of them came to take him and the others out. Superman quickly came to the aid of John when the Martian got attacked from the side and managed to take down the shooter and sent him off from his ride. John likewise turned intangible to another attack coming at him and then became tangible to grab the Atlantean and send him off his ride with a toss. Hori was moving quickly through the water and moved to land a punch into the face of another Atlantean to send him off his ride while firing one of her green star bolts into another riding his vehicle, forcing him to leave his ride or risk being blown apart with it. That allowed Starfire to close the gap, evading his shots with his weapon and landing another kick. Wonder Woman was quick to fight back against her own attackers, using her bracers to block several more blasts aimed at her direction by two more attacking Atlanteans. She then redirected the attacks towards the attackers and managed to destroy one Atlantean on his ride by redirecting the shots into the vehicle in question and that allowed her to move in. Locking the next attacks with the same method with her bracers and then managing to avoid another barrage by moving up and over the incoming forces and then using her lasso to grab the nearest Atlantean and then yank him off his ride, slamming him into his companion. The rest of the league managed to take down a few more of the subs that were trying to destroy them with the use of torpedoes and they evaded them. 
Once the Atlanteans were moving away from the fight, the lead moved forward to get to Atlantis, but Naruto was not comfortable with the idea of them being able to make it this far. If the Atlanteans had pushed this a lot more than what they had just done, they would have managed to overpower them, as fighting in water was not as easy for some of the team, most of all him. However he was not the only one who had doubts. Something is not right Naruto, these Atlanteans are pulling back instead of attacking us outright. This is not an ideal battleground for us, and they have the terrain advantage so why would they give ground? I agree with Akurama, but they might not have the numbers to maintain their attack. Maybe but I doubt that is so simple this is their backyard, so why are they not fighting hard? John then spoke out as he blasted down another pair of Atlanteans with his ring. They are falling back, this is our chance to get closer to Atlantis. They moved forward, but Naruto's senses were still warning him, and Kurama was also more than willing to point out that this whole situation was way too easy for them. The blonde shinobi was more than willing to agree with the whole thing, and soon their combined worries were proven to be accurate when several areas of the nearby terrain suddenly popped up to release strange containers, but all of which was sending bad vibes with Naruto. Along with the fact that this time instead of engaging them head-on, the apparent Atlanteans' forces were forcing to keep their distance. Naruto managed to use his chakra shroud briefly to avoid an incoming hit from one such weapon, only through his still potent chakra and intense training, plus Kurama's own that he was able to withstand the attack. That very same attack however sent him away from the others, and just as they were about to get to him, the canisters went off. They turned out to be depth charges and more than enough to stun the league. Naruto saw that, but knew that he needed to avoid the rest of the attack, and quickly guided himself away from the area. I hate doing this but I have to make sure some of us don't get caught so we can rescue the others. Karama merely growled a bit in agreement as they both knew that if all of them got caught, no one was going to rescue them. The fact that they still had no idea just how things were in Atlantis itself was enough to tell them that looking for allies in said city was optimistic at best and foolish at worst. His time as Hokage had never been easy, but they had their good points and right now he had to use what he learned to good effect. Unfortunately he had lost one of his swords in the battle, and while he was loath to leave his weapon behind, he decided to retrieve it later. If he knew one thing, if the bad guys did not find him, they usually would take something as a way to prove to their leader that he was gone. That or use his sword as a way to weaken the resolve of his allies to resist them. A good tactic too and one that he knew the hidden villages, even his own at times used when the situation was enough to warrant its use. But it was going to work to his advantage. An Atlantis. The rest of the league were not in the best of shape after being hit by those depth charges, and right now they were being held not merely by restraints. They were unable to use their full powers due to what appeared to be some form of power limiter and restraint that drained even Superman's strength. They had awakened in these restraints and learned of the power restrictors when they tried to move. It was not something they liked to happen to them, but right now they had to try and find out if they could find a Kwaman and hopefully stop this from going any further than it already had. They were soon in the room and surrounded by a large number of Atlantean nobles, and naturally before them was Orm. Though it was obvious that none of the League had any idea that the one who was before them was the mastermind. What are you surface dwellers doing here in the sacred halls of Atlantis? The League looked at him, and Superman was the one to speak first. We came here looking for Aquaman. You barbarians have the audacity to come here looking for the very man you killed. Aquaman is not dead. Orm smirked mentally at that, but still retained the visage of an enraged brother to the king for his people. You are correct fool. My brother is indeed not dead. But I plan to fix that little snag soon enough. What manner of trickery is this? John tried to use his telepathy, but had no luck due to the restraints, but spoke anyway. There is no trick involved, we sent out news that he was in critical condition, only to lure out his would-be assassin. Really? And what happened afterward surface come? John growled at that but kept himself focused for now, even though it galled him not to be able to use his ring. We managed to find said assassin and learned who ordered the hit on him, but before we could inform him, he left us, and so we tried to follow him before he came here. And why is that? Wonder Woman then spoke. Because we have learned that the one who hired the assassin, one deadshot by name, had been hired by someone who had access to treasure only found in Atlantis. Orm was angry at this, he felt that he should have sent someone far more powerful than some two-bit surface-dwelling mercenary scum to deal with his brother. The fool said he was th best at what he did, but apparently had not finished the job he was hired for. No matter, once he conquered the surface world he would find this merc and make him suffer unheard of agony for his failure. But for now he had a show to play out. You dare to accuse one of our people as being complicit to the death of our king. My brother I should have your heads for this. Starfire then spoke. It all true. We have no reason to lie. Orm snorted and replied. You surface scum all I, regardless of your form and looks. 
You dare to assume that you can come here to accuse us of plotting to kill our king, I shall have you suffer dearly for this. Diana then spoke. We know Aquaman returned to your kingdom to find out the truth. He was told of the possibility of there being a traitor in Atlantis before he came here. As long as one of us is not chained here, the truth will come out. Orm then spoke. You mean your companion who owned this sword? He presented the recovered sword of the Hokage, and the sight of the weapon was shocking to the rest of the League as they recognized the sword. Clark was shocked along with John, and Stuart was also shocked in the sense that he expected the blonde ninja was out of the firing line. But it was both Diana and Corey who were struck more than the others, the former was saddened at the possibility of the loss of one of the few to welcome her into man's world and someone she respected for his actions. And the latter obviously was utterly saddened by the possibility that her only friend in this new world was lost to her and she was unable to do anything about it. Orm was more than willing to milk this and spoke. His body was never found by my man, and considering the lies you said, I could care less if he is alive or not. Take them away. They will be the first to die for their crime of murdering our beloved king. Superman spoke out despite the fact that he and the others were being taken away. The Quaman is not dead. He is here already in this city, whoever is the traitor is hiding this from you all. Lies. All nothing more than lies by surface dwellers. Take them away and deal with them. Yes my lord. As the guards took the League members away, Orm began to look over the population and could tell that there was going to be a lot that had to be done. But for now, he had the momentum and he was going to make sure that he was going to be able to use all of it to finally bring his plans to completion. For now however, he needed to take care of other important matters that could not be delayed. The others were not in the best of shape at this point as the water soon began to rise towards them. Orm however made sure that the water was going up at a fast but controlled pace, no doubt wanting to avoid their suffering before ending them. That disgusted the League and while they knew that they were powerless, they tried to find a way free themselves. John was not pleased one bit by all this, unlike most of his compatriots, he did not need oxygen to breathe and therefore was not in danger of drowning as the others were. And had he been able to use his powers, he could have easily escaped, but with the power restrictor on, he could not becoming intangible and free the others. Thus he had the worst of it right now, since he was now powerless in saving the others from what was to come. Orm unfortunately made a serious mistake in stating that Naruto was no longer along the land of the living. He had not made the proper action of confirming that the blonde really was dead, because he was anything but dead. And where was the blonde shinobi in question right now? He was coming for the others. And to make things a lot more complicated was that a certain red-haired Atlantean queen had managed to listen in and was now resolved in what she needed to do. Back outside. The two Atlanteans did not think much on what the fate was of the missing surface dweller, as there was no sign of a body, just rubble on the supposed cave he was hiding. They were only able to see a floating clump of seaweed heading in their direction. And what exactly could that seaweed do to them in the first place anyway? There's no sign of the surface dweller at all. I know I rather doubt anyone could survive that kind of barrage. True enough since we only found that sword of his and not much else, so I don't think we can stay here much longer, we should report back to the city and get ready to move out with the others. They did not care much for anything else at this point and decided to go for their plan to head back to the city, but as they were about to head back to the city and pass over the seaweed, they were suddenly attacked by chains from nowhere and were dragged off their bikes. They turned and soon saw the seaweed turn into the surface dweller that they had been sent to deal with. Their shock ended as Naruto quickly smashed them hard in the face. Once they were knocked out cold, the blonde ninja looked their vehicle over he found what appeared to be cuffs of some metal. He took the devices and soon restrained the two. Once he was done, he headed out to where Atlantis was while using his chakra to move forward like before. He soon saw the city and could not help but whistle mentally to himself at the side of the city, even though he was looking only at the dome that covered it. It was big really big and he could see just why Aquaman would do all in his power and authority to protect it. But right now he had to focus on infiltrating the city and finding the others before they made their move to neutralize the leaders of the revolt and find Aquaman. It was here that he managed to get into contact with Batman, the Dark Knight had stayed behind to make sure that he could keep track of the movements of the Atlanteans. Now that he knew was not being followed he spoke to Batman. Batman, you there? Yes I am, where are the others? I lost track of you all when the Javelin got attacked. We're right on the money here Batman, the traitor or traitors have already taken over, my guess is they must have guys in the military or the one doing this is head of it all. As for the others, after we ditched the javelin after they attacked, we got broken up by underwater mines, came to later, but the others aren't with me. Alive? Possibly, no bodies at all right now that I can sense though with all this sea life and the fact I'm still getting used to being this deep in the water, I can't track them accurately enough, but they no doubt are in Atlantis since I can sense their chakra faintly right now. 
where in the city I can't say sin something apart from what I mentioned is interfering with my attempts to track them. Neither can I apparently there's some form of blocking field on the city of Atlantis. All right, I know you are still pissed off about the whole Deadshot thing, and I apologize for that, but we have to keep focus here since there's too much at stake. I know that but don't do that again if you can find another way I won't condone it and neither will the others. If I have to, I will kick you out of the league myself. Naruto heard the edge there in the voice and replied. Fair enough at any rate, I'll head into the city and find the others, if we can bring that field or whatever it is blocking you, then we'll contact you. Got it, I'll try and find a way to bypass it on my end. Near one of the docks. Two Atlantean sentries were on routine patrol and making sure no one would sneak into the place, though they were not sure just who was going to sneak into the city right now. They had not been told if there would be any other surface dwellers and they were more than willing to see this campaign against the barbarian surface dwellers go underway. However, they made the mistake of doing so with their backs turned to the water nearby and out came none other than Naruto who moved slowly out of the water and then made his move. He used his kunai with ninja wire to grab the guard and drag him back before the Atlantean knew what was happening. Once he did so, he smashed his target's fist to knock the guy out. And while doing so quickly moved at high speed towards the next one, and his training, stamina, and wetnet gave him an edge. He might not be as fast as Flash, but he got the job done and that at times counted more than anything. Good night. The last guard turned to receive one mean uppercut to the face that sent him flying, courtesy of one very irate blonde shinobi, as the other three were now out cold from the attacks of his two kage bunshin. Once they were secured and out of sight, the blonde sent them out to try and get the lay of the land of the city and possibly locate his friends a bit more effectively, as well as give any roving guard something or in this case someone else to worry about. He moved quickly through the city and then got to the highest point on the area that he could find, and when he was clear, he began to summon the nature charka into himself. Immediately he was in sage mode and began to scan the area to locate the others. Over time when he had been able to work with the league he decided to familiarize himself with their respective chakra signatures. And it was not very long that in this morass of beings, he found them since they each had one that was unique. He had no problem locating Superman and the others, but noted that while they were alive, none of them were moving at all. That was something he did not like one bit, as that meant that they were being held captive, and considering the sheer amount of power and talent in the collection of chakra signatures, the Atlanteans may have some form of power restraints that can contain their powers. He stuck to the shadows in the city and used Henge to avoid being found, while the rest of his Kage Bunshin moved through the city while also in Henge, and when they were done, they disappeared in smoke and began to send the information to him. He now had a good lay of the city and also had a very accurate idea that the Atlantean navy was packing up for something. That in itself was pretty bad, but he placed that aside along with his sage mode and headed out. One thing he did find out though that was of importance was that Aquaman had indeed arrived. Some of the guards had been talking and since they were so focused on said conversation. The Kage Bunshin had no problem in Henge getting close to them and hearing all it needed to hear before moving away on the guise of heading back to Eric's and then disappearing. So Aquaman did make it. But the fact that all this is going on is that he was captured and hidden away somewhere. That must mean our royal pain in the ass is not here we'll need to secure the others and then go to look for him. And find anyone who are not in on the coup in question. Right now I guess we're off to the palace. It did not take a good amount of time for Naruto to reach the palace and he tried to reach for Batman but found out very quickly that he had no luck in connecting to the Dark Knight, no doubt due to the dome, and he decided to not take any risks for now and blow his cover. He avoided a number of guards in the outer grounds and soon silently began to move up the walls using his chakra to help him stick to said walls. He spotted some guards nearby and could tell that they were not going to go anywhere and thus became a problem for him to deal with. He quickly reached into his pouch and took out a pair of smoke bombs, he had to move fast since he had no idea if the Atlanteans had senses that could allow them to find him even in the smoke. But he was committed and had to do it now since the others had to be rescued before really bad things happened to them. He rushed in and before the guards could raise their weapons, call the reinforcements in either order tossed them to release the smoke. This gave him enough cover to close the gap and land haymaker blows on the guards to knock them out. He quickly used his senjutsu enhanced strength to grab one of their staff weapons and turn it into primitive but effective handcuffs, and in he went. So far it seemed that no one had figured out he was here, but he was not going to take any chances at all. Moving through the city was not going to be easy, since he had no idea just how many guards are around and what kind of tech the people here had. As he moved deeper in the palace grounds the shinobi also did his best to locate anyone who could be able to help him. That might have sounded wrong since he was technically inside enemy territory, but he had enough experience in him to know that not everyone here could be on the side of the traitors to Aquaman. 
and they could help him find his comrades, as well as make sure that they could find the royal heart case and make sure he was not in a bad way. It was not long before his faith in the idea of finding an ally here of all places was vindicated when he spotted a woman carrying a mace. And not just any woman either, but the kind that had the trappings of royalty, despite the fact that she seemed to know how to use that mace, meaning a warrior woman in nature was before him. He kept himself hidden for a moment longer and then followed her, he managed to finally restrain the woman, but made sure that he was doing so in a manner to make it clear that he was not an enemy, still he made sure to speak to her as well. Relax miss, I am not here to hurt you, I am looking for friends of mine who got captured. Mara calmed herself and gave a reply. Very well, no doubt you are referring to the surface dwellers captured by Ormmen. I can help you free them. Naruto sensed no deception from the woman, and he released her, allowing him to see that she was one hell of a beauty to boot. Naruto however squashed that thought since now was not the time for this sort of thing. My name is Hokage, with the Justice League, and you are. Mara, queen of Atlantis and wife of the one you know as a Kwaman. Naruto nodded and replied to that. Good to meet you your highness, you know where they are. Mara nodded and they moved out as she spoke carefully to make sure her voice was not heard too quickly. Yes, I witnessed them being restrained and having power disruptors placed on them by Orm. I heard them saying that there was a traitor here in Atlantis who hired an assassin to kill my husband. Is that true? Every word of it, and gathering from what you just told me then I can safely assume Orm is the traitor. Mara's grip on the mace tightened, and Naruto did not need to look at her face or sense her emotions to know that he had hit the proverbial target right on the bull's eye. Yes, he has not only taken your friend's prisoner, but no doubt has done the same to Aquaman when he arrived. I had asked for truth of the rumors that he had returned, only to learn that my son was taken by Orm. And what I heard him say to your comrades made me all the more convinced that he has taken Aquaman hostage. I have no idea where he is, but I know that I need allies to help me find both my son and husband, and to stop Orm. Naruto was quick to see the picture and knowing what he knew of the traitor who now had a name he ventured a bit more. Orm's high up in Atlantis nobility then to have done this. Mara nodded. He is my husband's half-brother. That did it, this reminded him way too much of his wife Koyuki's situation for Naruto's liking, the fact that Orm had taken his own nephew, a baby hostage, no less only served to anger the blonde. Once that was over he and Mara headed out to the place where the rest of the league were being held prisoner. But not before Mara guided him to a nearby room, and there he retrieved his sword that he had lost and had been used by Orm to show that he had been killed. Boy was he going to have a field day busting that guy's bubble. In another part of the ocean. The Kwaman growled mentally to himself as he tried to free himself from the heavy thick chains that held him close to the rock face. He had been taken here by the traitorous followers of his half-brother Orm and soon chained there. He wasted none of his energies cursing the traitors, namely Brack who looked at him every now and then, and despite the foul worm's attempts to remain calm, he had no problem seeing the arrogance in his former general's demeanor as it happened. I will free myself Orm soon enough, and when I do, I will make your pain and the of Orms be legendary. He looked at the lava flow below him, and he knew that the lava was how Orm planned to dispose of him. It was thorough, but it would not be enough. The chains would pose a problem, but he did not become king of Atlantis merely through blood connections and also because he married well. He was a warrior and was not the kind to give up without a fight. But any plan he had prepared in his mind was placed aside when the arch traitor came. He glared at Orm and spoke to him with venom and a desire for retribution thick in his voice. You think you are going to succeed in this scheme of your Orm? Orm gave a wicked sneer and replied. And who dear brother is going to stop me? You? You're weak-willed and soft, not the ruler a warrior Atlantis needs. Once I get rid of you then my plans will move along nicely. Filling me is not going to bring you any closer to the throne Orm. Perhaps, after all the line of succession still stands. But I think I can deal with that easily enough. Orm soon presented a bundle wrapped in cloth, Aquaman soon recognized the bundle and was enraged even more when he saw it move and out came a cry of a baby. My son. Damn you Orm. As you can see, I have decided to end the last obstacle early on. He then placed the crying child next to his father, who struggled against the chains binding him, as he saw his son crying deeply at the situation surrounding him. Children apparently regardless of being human or not, could react to the emotional states of the beings around them. It was obvious that the malicious and cruel intent of Orm coupled with the anger and desperation of his father, made the boy cry. Orm however had no pity in his mind when he moved away, to him the removal of his nephew was all he needed to finally be free of his weak brother, claim the throne he felt was indeed his, claim the woman he also desired, and then bring the surface dwellers to their knees. All of it was proceeding well, and now he was going to make his last move to end this plan on a high note. 
He turned as soon as he was at a safe distance and fired a beam from the trident, destroying the rock formation keeping the boulder upright, not enough to kill both quickly, even if it was practical. No he wanted the death of his brother and nephew to be slow and agonizing for them both, so he made sure to make as much debris as possible be there to make the descent slow. And besides that, as it picked up speed it would handle itself from there. But bye brother, I will make sure to tell our people that despite my best efforts, we were not able to save you and my dear nephew in time. Damn you. And to throw the final barb at his brother. And I will make sure to comfort Mara as she mourns your passing and that of her son. And when it comes I and Mara will name our children after you both. Goodbye. Orm. However, back at the palace. As soon as they moved through the palace, the shinobi began to sense better the others, and he was pleased that they were still holding on. He however knew that he had to make sure that they got to them in time, as their life signs were not too good through his senjutsu enhanced senses, as well as the enhanced senses, thanks to Kurama. It also did not take long for him to sense a number of signatures matching that coming from Mera, which told him that they were soon going to encounter forces, and it was clear that they would be on Orm's side if they were guarding his fellow League members. It did not take long before they saw the guards, at least four of them and Naruto stopped Mera. We got some guards there, you ready for this your highness. Mera merely nodded, her grip on her mace tightening, and her stance going to that of a seasoned fighter, showing to Naruto that she was not a delicate woman. He liked that, and the fact she was gorgeous made him smirk at how lucky a Kwaman was in having a wife like her. That was placed aside though as he quickly charged at the first guard, and before the man could react, he used his speed to close the gap, cut down the weapon in his hand, and landed a hell of an uppercut to the jaw. That sent the guy flying backward and allowed Naruto to move in and clash with the other guard coming in with a staff. The weapons clashed and they traded a few blows a bit more, before Naruto soon knocked him aside, two more guards came in, but they were not prepared for Mara herself coming at them. Mara might not be as fast as Naruto, but she certainly was no slouch, and had used his attack as a way to disguise her presence, and then attacked. Needless to say the sight of their own queen coming at them stunned the guards and she made them pay for it. Naruto whistled in appreciation after seeing Queen Mara clonk one guard with that mace and quickly with the grace of a dancer, smack the next one out like a light with another swing to show her more than expected strength. All of that happened very quickly, and he could tell that delicate looks aside, she not only had strength, but one hell of a mean swing, as well as exceptional speed and agility. That meant that despite her more than obvious good looks, she was no delicate flower, and could easily make anyone trying to underestimate or regret it very quickly. And like any self-respecting man he spoke to the queen. That was very impressive your highness, I can definitely say that your husband is a lucky man. Mara nodded and spoke to him. Thank you, but we should hurry and free your friends from those power drainers. Right. The two moved to free the rest of the league, as the queen hit the controls and removed the water from the chamber. Once the water was out, he saw the others and was pleased to see that his fellows were unharmed. Once the barrier was down, he quickly channeled his chakra into his kunai and stabbed the devices hard with a blade covered with some of his chakra. Once the device on Superman was removed, the blonde could sense the energy come back to Superman, and he saw the man look at him with some surprise. H. Hokage. Nice to see you too Superman, don't worry, I am not a figment of your imagination. Hold on. He then cut through the restraints, and once the Kryptonian was free, he moved to free Diana and Cory. He did have a feeling of relief, though that the women were not yet awake, since the devices used to restrain their powers happened to be right on top of their abusts. He carefully removed the devices, and once he did so the two finally woke up, and it was Diana who spoke first. Okage you are alive. Yep and it's nice to see you and the others are safe Diana Heim. Same to you as well Cory chan I trust that those idiots did not try to hurt you as well. Cory's green eyes lit up with emerald fire, and her smile became utterly pronounced as she spoke to Naruto. Friend Hokage. You are alive. Naruto saw the happiness in Cory's eyes and her voice, so he replied with a smile of his own to his housemate, charge, and friend. Yep, it's going to take more than what they did to take me down. But enough about that we got to get out of here. The others nodded as Mara helped Superman stand up to allow him to recover, the move was not a permanent one, as the Kryptonian felt his full strength return to him. Once he felt fully restored despite being deep in the ocean, he turned to free Stuart and John alongside Mara, who removed Stuart's limiter as he freed the last Martian. The last of the Martians got his powers back, and the same could be said for John when he managed to get his power ring to flare back to life. Superman then turned to Mara, and she spoke to them in answer to the unspoken question on who she was. My name is Mara, I am the Queen of Atlantis and wife of the one you know as Aquaman. No doubt you already may have figured out that there has been a coup here in Atlantis, and the ringleader is Orm, he had taken my son not only a few hours ago, after I heard rumors that Arthur had returned. 
He is not alone either as I suspect that Brack, one of our senior generals is with him, since he has always advocated military force against the surface world, despite my husband's desire for the avoidance of military force, unless all has failed. That was the nail in the coffin for the League as John spoke. Then it must have been Orm who had hired Deadshot since as royalty, he could have access to the kind of wealth to hire the mercenary in question. And if this General Brack is his ally, he no doubt would have countermanded Aquaman's orders to leave the sub alone, along with the nuclear material. And no doubt when Aquaman came back here, then they captured him. Mara was outraged by the news that Brack and Orm had tried to have Aquaman assassinated, and if what these surface dwellers said was true, they had kidnapped not only their son but her husband as well. Please, you have to help find Arthur and my son. Arthur may have accepted war as an option in the past, but he has changed despite what you may think. But Orm and his forces will not be swayed, they plan indeed to go to war with the surface world, even if it defies my husband's wishes to avoid war. The others saw this and nodded, but Naruto decided to also put some two cents in, no doubt recalling his time in protecting his wife Koyuki. We need to get the queen to safety first before we locate Aquaman, if Atlantis is like any monarchy, then we need to make sure that she is not used as leverage by this Orm. Plus even with most of their forces gone, I'm willing to guess there's still some people here loyal to Orm, we take them out we have a chance to find those loyal to the true rulers. Diana and Cory nodded in agreement as they were both of royalty and thus could see the validity of such a move from the blonde shinobi. They had to secure the Queen of Atlantis and protect her, since losing her could be a major blow in their attempt to stop the coup, since she still had authority and power as the mother of the heir apparent and wife of the king. As for Aquaman. Aquaman struggled with all the strength that he could muster into himself, he had to free himself first in order to save his son. The movement of the boulder was now picking up greater amounts of speed, and he had no problem in no that time was against him. His son's cries egged him on, and soon he screamed out his triumph as one hand was free, but he knew that he could not relax yet. He tried to free his other hand, but saw that the chain was thicker here, and what he did before would take too long. He looked down and saw the buckle of his belt that could be removed. Made from the finest alloy of his people's smithcraft skills, it was more than strong enough for heavy-duty work. It had an edge also, not sharp enough, but it would have to do. He removed it and began to hack away at the chain. The blonde Atlantean knew that this was his last chance since the distance between him, his son, and the lava was growing shorter by the second, and if he did not make it. No, he placed such thoughts aside, he would free his son, himself, and then deal with that wretched bastard of a half-brother. And then he would make bloody sure that those who sided with him would be made to pay for their betrayal of their king and his desire to help keep the peace. He continued with all that he had in him, but it became clear that time was running out and the chain was too strong. Aquaman looked at the lava, his son, his chained hand, and his buckle. He thought of the last option, as brutal and bloody as it was. And made his choice on what course of action he was going to take now. He raised a buckle high and then sent it down with a cry not at the chain. But at his own hand above the wrist. Back in Atlantis. As they moved through the city, Diana could not help but admire the design of the entire city itself, she had heard stories of Atlantis to be sure growing up back home, but seeing the city for oneself was a far more potent experience than what one would be most used to. I can see why your husband would do all he could do to defend your people your highness. This city is beautiful. Mara nodded in thanks and focused herself on helping the others make it to safety to the inner sanctum of the palace. They needed to get to a place that could not be easily accessed and could secure them all while they tried to find her husband and her son. Naruto said nothing but readied his kunai and before the others could ask what he was doing, he fired the weapons right into the weapons of several guards who quickly took aim at the others. The throwing weapons had no problem jamming themselves into the front of the weapons themselves and they actually made the weapons explode. The Atlanteans screamed in pain and held their wounded hands, as even though they made the move to toss aside their overloaded weapons, they were still in pain when the League launched their attacks. Superman flew in and knocked down a number of them, while John quickly formed a shield to protect the Queen, while Diana and Cory moved ahead with the Tamaranian providing long-range firepower that John routinely would open holes in his shield to allow to pass, while Diana would be near Mara to protect her from attacks that John she could not easily reach of if he was too focused on deflecting the incoming firepower from the attacking Atlanteans loyal to Orm. John quickly used his own powers to give him a chance to get up close and attack the Atlanteans, as well as give him a chance to scout ahead for more trouble. Superman was more than willing to charge in and attack the Atlanteans by destroying their weapons and knocking them out. He usually held back his full strength and still did though loosen a little of it to hit hard against the Atlanteans, since they were a lot more durable than most. And the fact that he cowl move about now only added to that as he also used his heat vision to destroy some of their weapons and also take down some of the nearby pillars to act as distractions or to deny the enemy some form of cover. 
They see made their way to the palace, and they knew that they had to secure it. Naruto was quick to send out his Kage Bunshin to both scout out the palace a bit more and secure the rooms, as well as play the role of distraction. That role simply had his Kage Bunshin take the appearance of the team in Mara. The others were used to seeing his Kage Bunshin by now, though Mara Obvious was not used to seeing the Kage Bunshin, even more so when they took the appearance of herself and the rest of Naruto's team. Later. Once they secured Mara in the throne room and managed to find some of the Atlanteans who were loyal to Mara and Aquaman, which thankfully included a surgeon, they focused on looking for the missing king. The flyers in the group, namely Superman, John, and John Stewart. Naruto sensed with his Sinjutsu in Kurama's chakra and soon was able to sense the arrival of Aquaman, and to his relief, he could sense a signature with them that was that of a child. The fact the child in question had a mix of both Aquaman and Mara's chakra signature confirmed that the son of the two was in good hands. Hold up something ain't right. Naruto thought to himself when he noted that there seemed to be some form of injury on Aquaman and as soon as the door opened to reveal Aquaman and the baby. But the very second Naruto's sense of smell picked up an all too familiar smell that only someone without excellent senses would miss, he frowned darkly and spoke to Diana. Diana Haim, get that surgeon we managed to rescue the king is injured. The others were confused by that until Mara who had gone to greet both her husband and baby in happiness, recoiled in shock and horror. They soon saw the cloak covering the man's arm and then heard Mara speak to her husband. Your hand. The Kwaman did not respond to that immediately and merely spoke sternly despite the fact that Naruto could see that his wound was making things difficult. Where is Orm? The others in the league could only look on as the surgeon worked on healing or in this case, attaching an artificial limb weapon on the stump that was the king's arm. Naruto and the others got the full story from the man and he had to give the man credit where credit was due. He willingly sacrificed his hand to have the means to save his son. That was something the blonde had no problem respecting as it reminded him deeply of his parents' sacrifice to save him, both died to save him, and he could easily see that same desire in Aquaman. It was also similar to the time that he met the Raikagae, who willingly severed his own arm in the middle of the forearm after being hit by the flames of Amaterasu, so he can still fight to defend his beliefs and his village. That made him respect the man even more, but it was fairly obvious that some of the team were none too comfortable with what they learned. He took his own hand I can't believe it. Wonder Woman said with shock as they watched the healer tend to Aquaman, John shook his head and replied. Told you he was a madman. Naruto snorted at that and replied sternly. It's not madness to risk everything, even sacrificing a limb if it means saving someone you love Lantern. Back home I knew a mother who willingly gave herself over as a hostage to a band of thugs if it meant that her son would not wind up being beaten within an inch of his life and paraded around like a grisly trophy by a madman. Thank the Kami it never came to that and both were saved in the end. Unless you are in the same spot Aquaman was in or the mother I knew of, don't call anyone willing to sever a limb to save a loved one mad. John gave a look at Naruto and sighed as he understood that the blonde was right. Sorry about that. Now let's focus on the here and now, this Orm guy's already got a good head start on all of us, so we have to stop him. The Kwaman looked at them and replied. As much as it pains me to admit, your blonde companion is right. Orm however is my problem, not yours. Superman however was not going to let that slide. No he is our problem, yours and ours, he may be an Atlantean citizen, but he also threatens our world. Like it or not Aquaman, we have to work together to stop whatever it is your brother intends to unleash on us all. The Kwaman looked at Superman and could tell that he meant every word, and the same sentiment was present on the rest of the League. None of them would yield when it came to something like this one. It was here that Batman finally managed to call things in, apparently the interference that cut communications in the city to the surface was a generator system activated by Orm. Batman here, can you read me? Superman nodded as he tapped the communicator and spoke to the Dark Knight, while the Kwaman was still working on letting the surgeon attach the weapon on his arm. The sight of that was not the least bit pleasing to the blonde shinobi, but he said nothing as he could see why Aquaman would take that route. It was not only a weapon, but also a grim reminder of his mistake of not making sure that he was watchful for enemies within. Batman however was on his way elsewhere while talking to Clark. I've managed to locate the Atlantean Navy, they appear to have holed up all their main forces in the Arctic, and I am already picking up a very increase in thermal energy readings in the oceans. Whatever it is, you can bet that it is not natural. How bad? If the temperature increases we are talking about a complete destabilization of the natural ocean currents, increased flooding in coastal areas, and a whole slew of natural disasters. I'm guessing that whatever is doing this is some sort of super weapon, based on using extreme temperatures to melt the polar ice caps. And if the Atlanteans are there then we already know who built it. That was not missed by everyone in the room, and all eyes were in Aquaman. The blonde Atlantean knew that now was not the time for comments that could be misinterpreted. 
He had to be truthful about all of this and not hesitate this time. Orm is using a thermal generator weapon I developed it as a contingency plan if it ever came to the point that war was inevitable. I however left it alone after being rescued by Superman after that one named Lex Luthor captured me. What? John was not happy by that revelation but was stopped by John, showing that now was not the time to lose focus on the task at hand. Diana on the other hand was calmer in that regard and spoke. If that is the case, then he must have been the one to steal the plutonium. He is after all your brother and with him in Brack, there is no way anyone who was not part of this coup would think to question his removal of the material if they ordered it. Hori agreed as she was quick to see how that was accomplished without Aquaman's knowledge, since if what they learned was to be used as a reference, then the removal was done when. Superman was quick on the uptake, and soon the others were as well. He must have stolen the plutonium to serve as a power source then, we have to stop this all of us. The Quaman finally nodded as he looked at the harpoon that replaced the hand he had sacrificed to save his son. Then let us be off. As they soon reached the pole region where the doomsday weapon was, it was perfectly clear to the gathering heroes that the Atlantean navy was in force now. Naruto along with Batman who had joined up in his own fighter, were heading there along with those who could fly, which was pretty much everyone, with the marked exception of a Quaman, who was in the water swimming to the direction of his forces. It was safe to assume at this point that only those who were with Brack were on Orm's side, and the rest were merely following orders on the belief that Aquaman was no longer alive. That was something they had planned to capitalize on, but right now, stopping Orm and his followers was critical. It did not take long for the rebel Atlanteans who were on Orm and Brack's side to open fire on the incoming heroes, but they were ready for this. The stakes were too high for them to do otherwise. As soon as they got there, the forces under Brack and Orm did not waste time trying to stop them from trying to get to Orm. The Quaman used his harpoon to attack those with weapons and knock them out his fists, Naruto leaped down from the planet of Batman and landed on the water's surface and began to use water walking to allow him to run on the water and then unleash several elemental jutsu. Including his wind affinity and also using close combat moves to boot. Diana used her rope to unseat any of the soldiers. Ori unleashed green bolts on the weapons of the ships that were on the surface, as well as forced the Atlanteans to duck and break over, while John did the same thing and tossed the soldiers around, while Green Lantern and Superman were attacking the heavier subs with the bigger weapons. The team continued to fight with the Atlantean soldiers with all that they had, but Aquaman decided to head off and deal with his brother as Batman arrived and reported that the damage to the North Pole's ice caps was getting worse. Superman knew that they had to hurry, but they could not afford to ignore the Atlantean Navy either. Superman then decided to make his move as he spoke to the others. Wonder Woman, Starfire, John, and I will deal with the Atlantean Navy and keep them from getting into the heat of things. Lantern and Hokage will have to support Aquaman and meet up with Batman, we have to stop Orm quickly before things get even worse in this situation. Got it? Both of the heroes were accompanying Aquaman and supported him when being attacked, John managed to take out Brack's water bike as the traitorous general led the next counter-attack. The Quaman then summoned a killer whale that flew out from the water and scattered the forces of the Atlanteans before him. Green Lantern was impressed, and the Spartan had to admit that it was also impressive. However, they knew that they still had to focus on helping a Quaman as they covered his back, though Lantern decided to meet up with Batman, while the blonde shinobi covered a Quaman from those who tried to attack him and a Quaman. As a Quaman entered the cave where the control panel of the generator was he kept a wary eye out for Orm. It was clear to him that Orm would be here, since he would want to be there to protect or sabotage the device. He had to reach the control panel and shut this device down and stop this war from going on any further than it already has to save as many lives as he could manage. All he could hope for right now was that Orm did not change the codes needed to shut down the device. Once he powered down the device, he would personally deal with Orm and make him pay for what he had dragged the kingdom into. It did not take long for him to find his brother, and he naturally wanted to make sure that Orm knew just who he was about to fight. Orm. Orm turned and he glared at his brother while wielding the trident, he spotted the prosthetic and quickly guessed just how his brother had escaped. And despite his hatred of him, he had to give his brother some credit for taking such a risk like that, as well as actually going through the whole thing, and instead of resting come here with a weapon in place of his hand. You cut off your own hand. It seems you are not as cowardly or weak-willed as I thought. You call me weak-willed. I will make you pay for what you have done to the kingdom by dragging them into a war and trying to kill me and my son. Orm growled and replied as he leveled the trident at his brother. You will regret those words. I have the power now. And once I make sure that you are truly dead, all will be mine. The Quaman roared as he swam straight for Orm, intent on either strangling his sibling or skewering him in the gut with his new hand in retribution. But Orm knew that he was still armed with both his hands and the trident and was confident of his chances of success. 
However Aquaman was not going to make it easy as he fought on against his brother, the two Atlanteans traded blows back and forth until Aquaman managed to knock aside his brother with a kick that sent Orm to the ground, allowing Aquaman to stand up and looked over him. This battle is over Orm. Orm smirked a bit and replied. You're right, and you lose. He turned, grabbed the trident and fired blast at the control panel, and he replied. Now nothing can stop the generator. The surface world will finally get its long overdue fate for all the times they have destroyed and polluted the oceans, the one that you never gave it in your cowardice. The Quaman had no time to react as he was hit by another beam of energy from the trident as they were once more fighting with one another. Aquaman's new weapon proved to be useful as this allowed him to block the trident and attack with his right hand and injure Orm. However it was not going to be easy as Orm was able to attack better with both his hands. It was then that Orm was able to hit Aquaman with another blast to send him out of the cave, but he was able to his harpoon to stop himself from falling deeper into the cave. Orm had a smile on his face as he planned to finish off his brother, but before he could do anything. He was stopped by Naruto who used a combination of kunai tied with small and less powerful explosive tags and a blast of wind chakra that was made in such a fashion to resemble an explosive blast of air fired from an air cannon. The combined attacks were more than enough to force Orm back as the blonde decided to cover for Aquaman to recover. The former Hokage moved in and unleashed a barrage of shuriken and senban at Orm as Aquaman began to climb up from where he had been knocked over by Orm's attack. The thrown weapons were all real, but were not thrown towards their foe with direct lethal intent, as he had to avoid getting Aquaman caught in the crossfire, as well as delay Orm, so the blonde king could deal with the pain in the ass himself. The weapons soon made their way past Orm's defenses, as some of the shuriken and senbin hit Orm on the chest and legs with non-lethal hits, but still allowed an amount of blood to be spilled. Making the Atlantean scream in shock and pain at the hits, as he glared darkly at the one who shot him and leveled the grinning shinobi. You filthy savage. Naruto quickly moved out of the way using his reflexes and speed to avoid being hit by the energy of the trident as Kurama soon spoke to him about the energy generated by the weapon. That thing's got some serious juice behind it, that much I can sense. Don't get cocky with this guy Naruto, all he needs is an opening, and he'll take it. Naruto was more than willing to tangle with Orm after recovering his sword using one of his chakra chains to recover said weapon, and then using another chakra chain to block Orm's attempt with the trident to skewer him. Once he got the sword back he took out his kunai and soon went to work on the foe before him. Orm growled and tried to attack Naruto, but the blonde was not going to let this be an easy fight. He blocked a strike to his head and then blocked a strike with a staff end to his chest at the side with his kunai before he pushed back with his strength. The man roared at the blonde and attacked with thrusts and slashes with a trident. You will not stop me from ruling what is mine you dirty savage. You're calling me a savage. Look who's talking traitor scum. You dare call me scum. Naruto snorted and replied. What, are you deaf as well? Yeah I called you scum because that is was you are. You betrayed your brother, the rightful king of the kingdom, you gladly would sacrifice your own nephew the heir to the throne, and you would declare war on the surface only for the chance to be more powerful. You qualify as scum more than once with a resume like that. That insult sent by the blonde ninja made Orm scream in anger as he began to blast as Naruto who moved, using the ice formations to give him cover from incoming fire. He then moved quickly to smash into Orm again with his sword before he moved the trident aside and smashed a fist into the face of the bastard traitor of Atlantis that made Orm reel back in pain and anger, which only a blind, deaf, and mute person would miss. Naruto dodged another stab at his side and flipped over the man, and he roared at the blonde and managed to force Naruto to defensive with him blocking the attack as he spoke in an angry tone laced with arrogance. I am nothing like that spineless coward of a brother. I am the rightful king of Atlantis and I will remove all those who stand against me and in turn the greatness of Atlantis. Please you're nothing but a power-mad warmonger and traitor. You think that you will bring Atlantis to greatness. You will only bring it to ruin and into a war that is pointless to begin with. You speak as if you are going to win Barbarian. I will see you defeated kneeling before your betters. That attempt to rile Naruto only amused the blonde as he replied. You make me kneel. Ha. I'd love to see you try. Orm and Naruto clashed once more, and the blonde managed to avid more strikes aimed at him, but also kept his senses alert for the return of Aquaman. His goal was not to defeat Orm directly, no he had planned to let Aquaman deal with his traitor of a brother, since this was still Aquaman's fight. He soon sensed the return of Aquaman, and he smirked a bit mentally and backed away and sheathed his sword. Orm in his anger and arrogance spoke at the blonde. You think I will not strike you dead for your words barbarian, I will strike you down for your insults to the rightful king. Yap, yap, yap. Don't think I'm surrendering, I was merely delaying you, so he can finish this. 
Orm had no time to react as Aquaman appeared and landed one nasty left hook right into his face, sending him reeling, as Naruto moved back to Lantern and Batman to see if he could help the two of them. As soon as he got there, Batman looked over the ruined control panel, and while not as tech-savvy as the others, when it came to tech like this thermal generator thing, which was like a souped-up version of the generator back in the land of Snow Spring. Naruto could tell that fixing it the traditional way was a bust. And the Dark Knight proved that to be right when he spoke. The whole system is ruined, no chance of stopping it using the control panel. That's a waste, any ideas? Only one, I have to remove the plutonium from the core to shut it down. John was wide-eyed at that and replied. You're going inside that thing. No other option right now, can your ring shield me? John looked at his power ring and made his decision, there's too much going on for him to bother asking questions. And as crazy as the idea was that Batman cooked up, it was not like they had a hundred other options open to them. Only one way to find out. Naruto had to give Batman credit for having balls to suggest that, he read up on nuclear material and how deadly they were, along with other things, and knew that if John's ring could not do the business, then Batman was dead. But that meant that he had to watch over John as he was the source of the shielding, anything happens to him as Batman was in there, the Dark Knight was defenseless. I'll make sure no one blindsides John, last thing we need is him losing focus on shielding you. The two nodded and soon got to work as Naruto quickly got himself ready to defend John, but also wondered briefly on what was the state of the battle outside. He then had an idea, but then asked Kurama to shield himself and avoid being detected by John. Kurama agreed then soon Naruto spoke out to John. John, can you hear me? Yes, what is it Hokage? How is the fight outside? We are holding our own thus far, it appears that Aquaman's arrival has shaken them up and we are using it to our best advantage, what is the status with the generator and Orm? Naruto filed him in on the plan and John replied. Risky, but we have little options, what do you need? Can you send in Starfire or Diana here to double the security on the off chance we have company? Orm and Aquaman are already at it, but I doubt that Nut did all this on his lonesome. Very well, hold on while I send in some help. That came not a moment too soon as several Atlanteans aligned with Orm came in and began to fire at them, forcing Naruto to fight them off, but also stay close to John to protect him, and in extension Batman. This was not something he liked doing, but soon he got a reprieve as a blast of green energy hit some of the attackers as Starfire came in. Stay away from my friends. The Tamaranian beauty came in quickly and soon joined Naruto who was quite pleased with her arrival. The only one who was not however was Orm himself, as he saw what they were doing and quickly directed his attention to them all. Stop. That however cost him as Aquaman came at him once more and soon he was forced to turn back to fight his half-sibling. This carried on for a while longer until Orm moved to using a dagger after being disarmed of the trident by Aquaman. The traitor was now under the grip of full-blown anger and tried to skewer his former king and half-sibling with a dagger, all the while shouting out at him. You do not deserve to wear the crown or the throne you weak and spineless coward. That however was a mistake as Orm's anger clouded his sense of direction as well as potential hazards as he stepped on an uneven section of ice. The ice was also weakened by the very generator that Orm used and lost a good portion of its durability and it was there and then that the floor broke down and he fell. He was forced to drop the dagger and reach out to the rest of the ice, he only had one arm however that he could use with the distance he had, managing to grab the edge and look down and saw Yawing Pit beneath him. In that moment, he knew that he was now in peril as Aquaman stood up and looked at him. He begged to be saved at this point as he tried to reach out for his brother as his strength was beginning to fade due to his battle with his brother. Brother. Help me. Aquaman looked at him and his wound from before, he reached out his hand, but not to get his brother as Orm looked on in shock, he took the trident and spoke. I believe that this is mine. Orm cried out as he fell down into the dark pit as Aquaman looked on and headed off to see if the generator was taken out. Batman, Green Lantern, Cory, and Naruto were finally able to get the generator down as the Dark Knight was able to stop it and begin the cool down of the generator. Green Lantern was able to speak at this as the generator was powering down. It's shutting down, you did it. Batman shook his head as he got out and landing on the floor and Lantern retracted his energy. No, we did it. The Quaman arrived and while he remained calm he was happy as well. Then the threat is over. Hirama however was quick to point out something. You might want to reconsider that statement Blondie, turn around Naruto guess who's back. No. The group turned to see Orm enraged and no doubt armed with something and sure enough, he was indeed armed. It appeared to a sphere with triggering devices and none of them had to take a wild guess about the thing being a grenade. Orm looked at Aquaman, Green Lantern, Batman, Starfire, and Naruto with absolute madness and rage in him as he shouted. You will not leave this place alive. 
Naruto however had enough as he quickly summoned his chakra and then used his jutsu to control the still freezing cold water around him and the others. The same can be said for you. Suiten. Kaijin Nami. The massive wave of pure cold arctic water smashed Hart into Orm, and he was not the least bit done as he spoke to John. Lantern. Surround the sphere with your ring energy now. John did not hesitate and soon a sphere of green energy surrounded the massive cold water that restrained Orm and Naruto, soon tapped into Kurama's chakra, and then launched more of the water around the sphere, and after the water began to harden in the cold icy wind, he then used his wind chakra. Buitin. Hiteshinai Senpyu. The summoned wind was thick and dense, which helped with the freezing of the water to create a massive ice prison sphere to hold Orm. Once he was sure that the ice was thick and strong, he signaled for John to remove the barrier. The end result of that, and the fact that the sphere was now dumped into the open, was the freezing of the water to form a spherical prison of ice. The mad Atlantean managed to retain some common sense and deactivated his weapon, now aware that the detonation would have killed him in this new prison. But that hardly meant that he was not going to make his anger known to the ones who held him prisoner. The madman railed at the men pounded on the ice as Naruto sighed. The guy's shouting was a pain in the ears, how did you ever tolerate this guy? The Kwaman knew all too well the question was directed to him, so he did not hesitate to answer. Sometimes even I wish I can have that answered. But now I must deal with Orm before he escapes somehow. I will not let him get the chance to be plagued to the people he willingly betrayed. Naruto nodded, and it seemed that both Batman and Lantern were willing to let this be settled between Orm and Aquaman. As the man moved with his trident in hand, he looked squarely at Orm who was still trapped in the ice prison made by Naruto and John. Orm's face was full of hatred and anger, but Aquaman ignored it and spoke even if his brother would not hear him. You betrayed us all for power, and you were willing to lead our people into a war Orm. You willingly would kill the heir to the throne, my son and your own nephew, and no doubt take Mera as your own. For those crimes I should have you executed once and for all, but for today, you will remain in this prison for as long as it remains as such. But make no mistake of this Orm, escape and continue to harm the people you betrayed, and even those of the surface world, then I will stop you personally. Orm's face contorted with rage, and he shouted what one could easily understand as expletives and insults to Aquaman. This was more than enough to prove that even with the amount of ice and water that he was in, the traitorous Atlantean still was able to hear him. Aquaman ignored that and soon allowed more blocks of ice to move and surround the sphere of ice, increasing the thickness of the ice prison, and soon burying the place deep in the ice. Once that was done, he looked at Naruto, Batman, and Green Lantern, and gave a nod to show that he was done. They soon left as Aquaman had now begun to work on gathering together the remains of the Atlantean navy, and finding those who were truly part of the plot, and those who were duped into believing the lies or men his lackeys had been sending out. In Atlantis. Naruto could not help but feel like vomiting in disgust at how Brack was pleading for his life and his freedom, the same sentiment was apparent on the face of Aquaman, Mara, Green Lantern and Batman. He recalled a few times when he had to deal with sniveling cretins like Brack, who after realizing he was on the losing side after betraying the rightful leaders, would try to pretend and act like they were truly not aware of it all. But naturally this was balanced off by the fact that he had fought with villains who were more than willing to go all the way, even when Defia was staring at them in the face. At least they had the backbone to see things through, unlike the sniveling excuse for a general. If given half the chance he would have buried Brack alongside Orm in that massive frozen prison of ice. But that would be a Kwaman's call, not his sense as king, it was up to him how he would deal with the rebellious coward who did not even have the balls to stand up for himself. The Kwaman apparently had enough as well and made it perfectly obvious to the general and his followers who were now being watched intently by those who had proven their loyalty to the rightful ruler of Atlantis. Enough. You have shown where your true allegiance lies to me before Brack and do not think you can convince me otherwise. By all rights I should have you executed for this but know you will serve as a warning to all who side with tyrants. Take him to the deepest and darkest prison we have and make sure he remains there for the rest of his natural life. Yes your highness. Brack's attempts were soon at an end as the rest of the league who could be there were also looking on. Diana and Corey showed disgust at Brack, while John was deep in thought about everything that happened ever since they encountered Aquaman and also his own actions in the mission. Superman along with John looked as the man was escorted, while Batman was not too pleased about what he learned ever since this mission went down. The Kwaman sighed as he began to think about all that had happened and began to speak once more. I have made many mistakes this day, I have been so blinded in the belief that my people's enemies were on the surface that I did not think that the greatest danger to my family, my people, and my home would be right underneath my nose. Naruto could not help but agree with that, Danzo rang a bell in his brain in that regard, since that bastard gave more trouble than good solutions. 
But for now he said nothing as it was not long before John himself was the one to speak, and in hindsight, it was a good thing since the two of them needed to be the ones to patch things up between the two of them, so there would be no more issues. Both of them were passionate protectors in their own right, but Naruto had no doubt that this event taught both of them to always look things on both sides of the fence. But for now he had to think about what he would do once he was back in Los Angeles, and already after this adventure, he had some new ideas for a new book. Back in LA three weeks later. Farrell whistled as she looked at the newest book written by Naruto, who had just gotten back at least a week after the mission and had burned the midnight oil to make this new book. So far it highlighted a new story that dealt with an underwater adventure with drop-dead gorgeous women and more. She looked at sage Naruto Uzumaki and after a few minutes decided to speak to him seriously. This wouldn't happen to be related to that little incident with that Aquaman fellow and the Justice League by any chance. Naruto grinned and replied. Yeah, you could say that, anyway, I take it that the story's okay boss. Peril smirked and replied. Yep, knowing your penchant for good imagination it will do all right. At any rate, usual fee for the book and also for at least three more sequels, sound fair. All right with me, anyway, any luck with your friend Miss Lane. Peril sighed a bit and replied. Not at the moment so we should wait until she is available, though considering she happens to be sweet on Superman, I think that might take a while to happen. In the meantime, I'll get this new story of yours into circulation, a test first to see how people accept it, and then we'll make it from there. Got a feeling though that after that mess in the world assembly with that Aquaman character some time ago, there will be some people who might not be too happy with reading about this right away. So we'll make sure to plan the release once things calm down, at any rate, anything else to add to this one? Naruto shook his head at that. Not right now, though it's mostly a draft idea, at any rate, I should get the rest of it ready for the first unveiling. Be sure that you do Sage, you've gone and done a lot of food work so far, and I'd hate to have to let you go, even if you only do part-time work for my company, at any rate I think it's best that you can take some early time off. Business has picked up but not enough for you to be here in the office for a while. Right there boss, anyway I will be moving on. Sure thing oh yeah, don't forget to come in the office later before the end of the week for you check. Plus I think it's time we do some catching up since it's been a while. A seductive smirk on Carol's undeniably attractive face made Naruto smile, and he replied to that. Sure thing, I will not miss it for the world. Later. Naruto was once more out on patrol in LA and moving through the buildings while keeping an eye out for anything that was way off the normal charts. Kurama was likewise keeping an eye on things to support his longtime partner. From anyone trying to tag him and so far nothing dangerous was detected by the war-hardened Biju. And while the blonde had managed to have a nice meal to ease any hunger pangs he had with him. Looks like it's going to be another slow day Kami I was hoping for some more action on dry land for a change after that little stint in the oceans. You sound disappointed. Of course I am disappointed, there's nothing here to make me feel stimulated apart from a few scrapes and the like we don't have a lot to do. Anyways, how come your red-haired babe from outer space friend is not with us? Tori Chan's gone off to be on the watchtower with Diana and John for now, figured getting the chance to see space would do her some good. And before you ask, Raven Chan is currently reading more of her favorite books, and I made sure to leave her some very nice food and drink if she needs them. Right well let's hope we get some action around here. Dealing with the regular thugs, even the boosted ones with drugs are not as entertaining. Hold up I'm picking up something weird coming in. Naruto stopped from his leap and quickly launched a chakra chain to secure himself to climb up to the roof of the building. Once he got there, he began to focus all of his senses on what was going on. What do you sense Kurama? I'm human all right, but mixed with animal. Feline from the feel of it too, and definitely know the kind we're familiar with. Better head over there Naruto, if I recall enough, that's where some of the banks are. Naruto wasted no time and headed there as fast as he could, he did not take long to get there when he saw a dozen injured officers nearby, alive, but certainly going to be feeling some serious pain in the morning afterwards, and some of them sporting. Blow wounds. That explains the feline energy signature I picked up. If I didn't know any better I'd say we're fighting someone with animal traits in them. Obviously not natural and quite possibly some sort of bioweapons experiment or some poor schmuck who got in way over something. This remind you of that time that Mizuki Nut came back to make your life miserable. Ugh you just had to bring that one up huh? Naruto growled recalling the time he had to fight none other than Mizuki who had escaped prison and had ingested an old formula developed Rachimaru as a way to hybridize human and animal DNA together to create living weapons with unique abilities. Naturally while it gave Mizuki a serious edge, it eventually destroyed him, proof that not only was the formula utterly unstable, but Orochimaru did not give a damn about life that much, unless he got something out of it, and knowing that bastard, he got enough from Mizuki and left him to rot. 
He never liked Mizuki one bit and was actually pleased he may have lived but never became a ninja while he was alive. Placing that out of his mind he moved into a bank that apparently was the target of whoever was the hybrid. He had a feeling that this new guy was another one like Mizuki a muscle-bound oaf with no brains and uglier than sin. Unfortunately for Naruto his thoughts on the matter proved to be dead wrong, the very second he faced a figure who came out from the vault with a huge bag of money. The figure was that of a woman, all the right curves and swells in all the right places, and had the muscle tone to show an athletic build that could easily make heads turn. Not to mention the fact that she had a rather interesting bust to boot. The fact that she was only covered in fur meant that she was technically buck naked. And despite the fact that not only did of not only cat-like features but a tail as well, she certainly was eye-catching, in an utterly primal exotic cat girl kind of look. Okay definitely a heck of a lot better looking than that bastard Mizuki ever was. Who the heck is she? Naruto indeed had no idea who she was and was right now trying to figure out just what was his next course of action, involving the now obvious thief before him. Sure he could get the whole cat burglar bit from Selena, this new arrival before him on the other hand was taking that term to a level that was definitely new to him. It was fairly obvious to him though from the injured police officers and bank employees around that she was more than able to hold her own. He finally spoke to the literal cat girl before him. Okay this is definitely new to me lady, who are you? The cat girl merely cocked an eyebrow and spoke in an accent that definitely screamed intelligence and drive to Naruto, and the slight purr that came with being half feline only added to the whole mix. Now that's a first, usually most guys I know try to aim guns at me and call me freak or monster. Naruto could sense the truth there along with some measure of hostility, so he could tell that this was not something that was going to be on a hair trigger. So he tried the diplomatic route first before trying something a bit more on the side of physical aggressive force. Well obviously I'm not one of the usual guys you deal with miss. Cheetah will do. Cheetah? Wait, that speed demon of a predatory cat in that continent called. Africa you dolt. Right, and don't call me a dolt though I certainly never heard of her before. Maybe you haven't, but I'm wagering a guess some of the long time heroes here on this world might have. Better given them a call first, though I doubt our new guest is going to let us let her go that easily. Right. Okay, now I know who you are, can I take a guess you know who I am? Jita nodded as she placed down the bag and spoke. Yeah, you're the Hokage everyone here in LA talks about. But regardless you are not going to stop me from doing this. Even if you are indeed with the league there's no way I will give up without a fight so come on. Naruto quickly used his kunai to defend himself when Chita came at him with claws coming out from her fingertips and clashed with the steel, forcing him to move back. The blonde ninja knew there and then that this was not going to be an easy thing to deal with. He dodged another attempt to slash into him by the hybrid female and managed to move in and land a kick to her stomach to get some distance between them. Jita coughed out some air from the blow along with a cry of pain, but she was not backing down either. As she came at Naruto with a roar and slashed at him constantly. It was obvious to the battle-hardened shinobi that she lacked combat training and was relying on a more animalistic fighting style to take him on. That did not mean she was not capable since like Mizuki, her hybrid form was obviously giving her some physical advantages. Higher level strength being one of them, better speed, and higher resistance to impact though not by much. The two moved to the wall, and Naruto quickly ducked and heard a loud scratching noise above him to see three claw slashes on the nearby wall from Cheetah's attack. The blonde quickly landed a powerful shoulder charge into Cheetah before she could go after him again. The blonde finally took to the offensive and launched a number of fierce attacks on Cheetah, forcing her to move back, and more than once the attacks had come close to her. The blonde soon used Tejutsu, and soon the two of them were locked in a battle of wills. Jita rather, Dr. Barbara Ann Minerva could not help but realize that taking on the Hokage was not exactly the best idea, since he had already more experience and skill than most people she fought with. The former scientist and reluctant criminal had come to Los Angeles to steal more money in order to find a cure for her current state. She knew that she would be in the Hokage's territory, but had hoped that she had time on her side, since Los Angeles was a large city. Now as she began to push back against the ninja, she knew that she could not afford to keep fighting with the blonde. The transformed woman heard a good deal of the blonde shinobi, and while she was no slouch as a fighter, she had made sure to avoid combat since she was not much of a fighter to begin with and lacked actual combat experience. She had to leave the situation before her and escape, even if losing the money she needed was the price tag. Naruto could tell that she was not liking the possible outcome of fighting him like this, and he decided to try and find out more of this literal cat girl before him. You know physical abilities aside, you don't exactly strike me as a serious fighter. Which means either you don't have field experience or you were not a fighter until recently. Point being. Point being that it is confusing me on why you want to pick a fight. This is not going to end well for you so I suggest you give this up. 
Jita bared her teeth at that and replied. Never. You could never understand me. The two finally broke away, and Cheetah was not wasting time as she quickly grabbed a nearby desk and turned it into an impromptu club to bash Naruto's head in. Naruto quickly drew his sword and channeled his chakra into the sword to cut the desk in half and then used it to cut another weapon taken by the humanoid feline, this time a long lamp to make into a staff. However the metal while hard and strong was not meant to take on metal enhanced by chakra and soon the weapon was cut. This however did not deter Cheetah as she lunged at Naruto. Normally Naruto would have used his sword to kill a foe like this if the situation became desperate and in a sense this one was a desperate situation. But his senses, namely the kind that he got from Kurama were alerted by something. That something was coming from the woman before him. Her emotions. Despair. Desperation. Self-loathing. Guilt. Hope. All of this was in the woman and seemed to be the driving force to make her go for money and the fact that she was willing to fight him like this, even when it was clear that he was in a sense a better fighter since he was battle-hardened and she. Well certainly no slouch had not fought to kill for some reason or another. This only served to make him all the more determined to find out just who she was. But before it could come to that, the sounds of sirens came and the cat girl showed an expression of dismay, no doubt realizing that while she could tangle with the cops, fighting both them and the Hokage was not going to end well at all for her. She glared at him and left, Naruto however did not let her leave without him trying to find out more about this person before him. He left a pair of Kage Bunshin to tend to the wounded while he went after the cat girl. Her unique chakra signature did take him some getting used to while tracking her was a bit harder, still once he got to the roof of the buildings and began to move around his way, it did not take long for him to spot her. He moved quickly tossed a Hiroshin kunai at the ground before her. The weapon forced her to stop and turn around, seeing nothing, Cheetah turned to continued running, thinking that Naruto missed. Only for him to be right in front of her, the kunai in question in his hand and pointed at her. She was shocked by that and managed to ready herself for a fight, though it was obvious that Naruto's sudden appearance before her before she even knew he was there was rather unnerving to her. However Naruto decided not to attack her directly, instead he lowered his kunai and spoke. Why are you here? What? You obviously need money yet I don't sense any greed in you more like desperation for something. Tita did not say anything, but the way he spoke made her worry on what he was getting at. That is none of your business. It is when you come here and harm innocent people, now tell me why you are here. Jita was not pleased at all by this, and she had no doubt that if she stayed any longer, the company she had once been part of would be after her again. She was not going to let herself be captured by those bastards never. There was no way she would ever work for and with them again, not after they turned on her. She however placed all thoughts of that aside for the moment and focused on finding some manner of escape route from the blonde shinobi and wondered if seduction could work. The idea was absurd considering her looks, but she knew that if he was able to get to her like this, escape by evasion would be extremely difficult, fighting was obviously out of the question, and his metahuman powers were nothing to sneeze at either. But before she could attempt it, Naruto replied. You know forgive me for saying this, but you really are different from the one I had to deal with who had the same condition you had. That stopped any thought Cheetah had as she digested just what Naruto had just told her. But before she could say anything else, Naruto spoke once more. I am going to let you go Cheetah, don't make me regret that decision. Get out of here now. The female villain looked at him with confusion on her face, but she was not going to let this chance escape her, and she decided to turn and leave. But then he spoke once more. I want to know what happened to you before anything else, so let's hope that our next meeting ends on a better note. She turned to speak, only see Naruto disappear, and before she could find him, she had to change her mind, since the cops were getting closer. As she did so, she was unaware that Naruto was nearby using his hinge to take the look of a simple ventilation shaft, and when she was clear, he broke the hinge and then decided to go to the watchtower and see if any of the guys could tell him just who was it that he had just run into. Unfortunately she was not going to be the only one who was soon going to be someone that Naruto was going to be meeting again soon. In a hidden warehouse. She is here are you certain? Yes my lord the child is here in this wretched city. Have you found an exact location? No, my lord the city is rife with energy that interferes with her magical scent. It interferes with our tracing. Nonsense. That crystal should find her scent easily. How can the city be blocking it? We believe that it may have to do with the energy we sensed here before on numerous occasions. We believe that it may be the reason our ability to track our prey has been hampered. How powerful is this energy? We cannot ascertain that my lord, but the amounts we have sensed are immense, highly focused and strong. There is a demonic feel about it yet. Yet. Yet pure, clean of the things that one associates with evil almost like a god. Impossible such a thing cannot be possible. I wish I can say that you are correct my lord, but what we have sensed is indeed such a thing. Seek it out then. 
my lord. Seek this power out along with the child we shall find a way to return this power into his true form of darkness. And with it in the child then our power cannot be matched. The figures nodded and soon left, and back in a hidden fortress somewhere in the world the one they spoke to hidden in the shadows, spoke to himself. So we have yet another power here. Dear Raven run and hide all you like, but you cannot escape your fate. Your father will rise again and you shall be mine to do with once it is all over. And for you whatever you are your power shall benefit the church of blood. Thanks for watching, I hope did you enjoyed this video, if you please leave a like, share and subscribe, so take care, be healthy, make sure to drink water, see you in next video.